Hey, welcome to Game Brigade. I am Brian Greer, and it has been a hot minute since we have had a weekly Kickstarter video. Uh, to be honest with you guys, it was my birthday week, and that went a little long, and you just kind of, you know, lose momentum sometimes. So we're back. Uh, I did want to address um, the series at some point uh, based on community feedback and my analytics trying to figure out a good rhythm for what really the channel wants. It seems like people generally tend to want my personal opinions rather than like a rough overview of news, which is what I personally prefer to produce. So we'll see how this series outlines and changes and kind of flows because I want to be aware of every Kickstarter and share it with you guys so you guys are aware of them. Um, but like I said, not every Kickstarter is exciting. Uh, a lot of publishers don't put an effort to bring the content uh, to us to make it so that you guys even, so we can even tell you what the game is about. Sometimes they just don't have anything. Uh, so I really want to just focus on games really that interest me, which is what the series used to be more when I called it Rapid Fire. And then I was like, oh, let's expand it. So we're going to try to find that happy medium, which serves what the audience wants, which is more personal opinions based on the gameplay or my early thoughts, uh, impressions, uh, as well as being uh, kind of, you know, aware of the Kickstarter as, a, you know, everything coming out. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, jump right into the first game. And I will also say uh, there are a few more games that are launching this week. I did not include them because I think there was a lack of effort in terms of the publisher uh, putting out content for us. And if it's, if it's not worth their time to give us the information we need, I don't think it's worth our time to learn about it. And may maybe that's divisive. We'll see. Well, let me know. Let me know if you guys think I'm being a jerk. Uh, first off, Age of Trains. This is coming out on the 23rd. Uh, this will be a two to four or two to five player. They have two to five down here. They have two to four up here, 60, 90 minutes. Now this one, uh, interests me in the sense that it's a set collection game. Uh, or not, it's not sex collection, uh, pick up and deliver. I only have one pick up deliver game that I've played personally and I liked it, uh, Star Wars Outer Rim. Now, do I like that game because it's in a theme that I like or did I care for the setup, the pick up and deliver? I don't know because I've not played any pick up and deliver games. But the, the uh, idea of this one is you're going to have different types of cargo that you're going to be delivering to different types of ports. And you're going to have to choose, you know, the, the region you want to go to to reach your different places. Now, they also say that these regions are somewhat accurate to the location of, of the city. So this is Poliska, Poland. Uh, so I don't know how many map tiles they're going to have, um, but they state that it's going to be relatively you know similar which which could be cool uh, it gives you some replayability and if you're into the trains if you're into uh the locations that they're pre presenting maybe like uh western europe kind of thing or western eastern europe uh it might be interesting uh, in terms of what i'm looking for it also has worker placement now they didn't dive too much in terms of like the wo worker placement aspect uh but i am interested to see that because i do like worker placement games uh pick up delivers pretty good set collection all the things are there in terms of the pieces it's just does it work we'll have to find out when the kickstarter launches i'm also curious about who they have to review or preview this game so we can actually see the physical game in action and kind of decide if it's worth our back so for the moment uh i'm really holding my my you know holding myself in terms of waiting really to see what other people have and uh, what does it look like the next game is Earth Rising, 20 Years to Transform Our World. This is going to be coming out on August 24th, as are the rest of the games we're talking about. All of them will be coming out on the 24th. Now, this is a relaunch. Earth Rising has already made an attempt at Kickstarter. They had some uh, issues that they felt like they personally realized in terms of the marketing, the direction, whatever, and they wanted to try again. And Earth Rising is a game where... Planet Earth uh, is currently going through a global crisis, and we have 20 years to transform the world and hopefully prevent uh, things from occurring. And players will be taking uh, action. They'll be basically taking on roles of these different uh, characters, eco-investor, you've got the innovator, you've got the activist. They all have their own personal abilities. Uh, and you're going to all be working together to try to change different types of work sectors 
uh, to reduce the strains on the earth and whatnot. My fear with this one is that it is extremely heavy theme. And when you look at the original Kickstarter, a lot of the major uh, blurbs, like the quotes from people, were activists or environmentalists, uh, economists. And it's like, okay, yeah, you got some people who are part of this realm of, you know, the green, the green leaf realm. Um, but what about the gameplay? Is this more theme or is it with a, a gameplay tacked on or is there an actual board game here? So that's really what I want to know. And I'm hoping that they've got some prominent reviewers that I feel comfortable with uh, because I didn't, I obviously have never played this game. So I want to know, is there prominent reviewers out there that they've sent this to that are giving me a good idea of, is there an actual game here or is it just theme? Um, my other inclination would be, if there's not, would be to wait for retail. But based on their last campaign, this is a game that's really going to be right in that line in terms of production, uh, meeting their expectations, in terms of meeting their goal. So it's not like a game, you might, it might not even be a retail game in terms of their funding, their funding goal. So that's interesting to me. Uh, in terms of their pricing as well, they're fairly expensive. The base game for this is about 45 uh, pounds, and I think it's around 15 pounds shipped to the US. Uh, the pound as of right now is around like $1.36 in terms of the conversion rate. So that's a fairly hefty game. It's about a 60 some dollar game. Um, and I want, when you're looking at some of these components and you're looking at the overall board, does this look like a 60 to $70 game, not including shipping? I don't know. So there's a little bit of question marks here in terms of production. I could say that most likely their production is higher because they are trying to use eco-friendly methods, uh, which generally has a higher back-end cost. So I spent a lot of time on Earth Rising. We're going to move on to Backyard Chickens. Now, Bar Backyard Chickens is probably a game I would never cover. Um, it's a family-oriented game, but they do have some fun little cheeky um, gameplay elements here while you are playing cards to make your chickens happy uh, as you gain points. Um, that's really the idea. You're going to be drafting chickens, playing chickens, playing, building a deck to make the chickens more happy. And as you make them happy, their points are listed at the top. And you'll rotate these cards either to the right or left. The more you make them happy, the more eggs they lay and the more points they're worth at the end of the game. If you make them unhappy by feeding them things they don't like, they get unhappy or they'll eventually flee the coop and run away. So it looks like a very light family oriented game, not a game that I'll be backing, but if someone wanted to play a game with me and play this, I, I wouldn't say no. I, I'm interested in it in terms of the play aspect is I think I can, you know, you probably have fun, you know, playing one or two rounds, but in terms of backing it, unless you've got a family who is into farm farming, or if you have maybe some backyard chickens that you have kids that want, you want to kind of introduce them to, this might be a fun game for that backyard chickens coming out August 24th. Now this one, this is the game I'm really looking forward to. I'll be giving this my recommendation pick of the week, uh, black rose wars rebirth. Now black rose wars, by Magnus Ludus Studios, I believe. Lud I said it backwards. Ludus Magnus Studios uh, was uh, kind of a, I, I don't want to say a hit because it was really liked in some aspects and really disliked in other aspects. I personally held off, but I walk by it every time I go to my, my game store. They've got one copy sitting there left. And every time I'm like, hmm, should I get it? Re Rebirth is not like, a, uh, it's almost like a, re a redo of it but they've taken it in a different path. So you're gonna see a lot of the same tiles and mechanics in terms of the ideas from Black Wars, but they basically said, this is gonna be 30 years in the future. Things have changed. The tiles that you'll be playing on, there's hexagonal tiles that you'll be playing as you build out. Uh, in the original game, they were actually rooms that were clean and you destroyed the rooms. Now, when you go back, the rooms are gonna be overgrown with plant life and I wonder if they have any photos. They, should, they don't. They probably don't. I think they only have this one photo. Um, 
but they're going to have some plant life on them. And then you're actually going to be doing the reverse instead of destroying them like you did in the first game. You're actually going to try to recover them. The interesting part about this game is it's also a competitive game. So as players uh, attempt to rebuild these rooms, they're going to have point scorings in terms of the best to the worst. So they're going to have that competitive element as well. It's a deck building, variable action power game. I'm going to be very excited about it. We'll probably cover this in a um, reasons why you should back it. So we'll we'll talk about that in more depth. But this is one that I probably would say uh, put this on your radar. Check it out when the campaign goes live because I think you're going to really like it. The Gardens. Uh, this is going to be a game based on the Sydney Gardens right off the Opera House. And I've actually been to these gardens. I, I volunteered when I was 21. Uh, to do some conservation work in Australia and on our return trip back from Alice Springs we visited a bunch of cities one of them being Sydney and we visited the gardens it was great so very pretty garden area um, this game is going to be where you're going to be drafting different tiles from a uh, common pool let's see if we can see it they don't have it it's actually right above this board and you are going to be placing those tiles on your tableau board here basically trying to form different types of points now down here in this section if you can kind of see can i zoom in here yeah down here we have uh different types of player scoring which will say okay if you have these trees in a row or if you have a a water path in a row score different types of points so that's going to be coming into effect as you draft your tiles and you place them in your garden trying to uh, build the most you know pretty luscious garden and then in the meantime you're also going to be having your little meeples walking around your village and if it, they'll be more successful if they have paths and scoring points as then you'll be sending your meeples around this little path here where you'll be collecting your victory points until the end of the game uh will i be back in this one most likely not but I think it's got some interesting elements, uh, probably a lightweight complexity game. They don't have a complexity here, nor rating, um, but I think it might be interesting to check out. So that is the gardens. The last one that we are going to be checking out is super truffle pigs. Again, another lightweight family oriented game. This one uh, has some elements that I personally do not like in board gaming uh, with take that and player elimination, player elimination. I can get behind if it's uh if the weight of it feels like there was like stuff happening in like like ti4 if i get eliminated in ti4 like i was involved it didn't just happen it wasn't a random event but this one you're gonna be sending your pigs uh there's obviously no pictures to show you you're gonna be sending your pigs. so why not just do my main camera there's no pit there's nothing to show you uh you're gonna be sending your pigs out to um look for truffles and then you're gonna be flipping tiles which will then have wolves and the wolves are going to be looking for your pigs if all your pigs are eaten by random wolves you're out uh, so the person to collect the most truffles or be the last pig left on the board from the wolves will be the winner so the take that mechanics the player elimination not really my cup of tea because it makes for an unexciting board game night and i, I personally but the game might be fun if that's something you're up your jam or if you're a truffle fan uh, Take a look at it. I hope I wasn't uh, too too much of a downer this week. A lot of light games, a lot of family games out this week. Only one big hitter uh, out there with Black Rose Wars Rebirth, uh, which I'm excited about. Like I said, we'll cover that next week when it launches, probably on Wednesday. Oh, I might be out of town. I'll try to cover it. In fact, because I'm out of town that next week, maybe it'll give me more time to cover it on like a Thursday or Friday. We'll see because uh, I can't remember what day we're coming back. So anyways, that's the quick rundown. I don't know how long I've been recording. I've been trying to keep these down uh, as low as I can for you guys. If you liked this quicker format with a little bit more personal opinion, let me know. Also, what do you guys think about me cutting out games that are just not there? Do you still want to know the games? Do you want me to do like a list of other titles coming out? I'd like to know what you guys want as I'm fleshing out this, this series because... I do like doing these weekly shows because it one it really helps me keep on track of like staying committed to take staying on track of what's coming out weekly. Uh, if I if I take a week off, uh, I generally don't really uh, look as much as I normally do. It's more of a casual experience. So this really keeps me dedicated to like okay what is hitting so I can be aware. So I do like that. So it's a little selfish in that in mind. 
But I also notice when I'm looking at my analytics, they're kind of lower on these ones and, and they're very like uh, peaks and valleys. And I don't really want peaks and valleys. I want a steady viewer stream. So I'd like to know uh, the 10% of you guys that usually hang out to the end to leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think. Um, again, I'm here for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Talk to you all soon. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button. Leave me a like. I appreciate it all. Thank you. Bye-bye.